Okay, this is Mama Audrey about to tell the story about how back in 1961 she was kind of convinced that Christianity had died. She met some Haitian people. They told her to read the book of Acts and pretend that all those people there were just ordinary people like your friends and the bus driver and the diner waitress. Life is largely storytelling and we're throwing stories at you from the old family archives. This is 1998, and Mom had just told me the story about getting her surprise language, which she had not told me about for 33 years. A supernatural thing had happened to her. She's about to tell the story right here. Here's the kind of lead-in for, for it. Every window, practically, he, he was fed or whatever, and they, they brought him back to, like, Mutitious, I think his name was... But, um, he was talking about the, another time a man the book of Acts. lied to uh, the, the uh, heads of this group that was uh, being formed and spreading the news about the resurrection of this, this promised Messiah. He lied and um, he was struck dead for lying to God. And uh, there were, this uh, story was about Ananias and Sapphira. There were uh, both positive and negative things happening that were very amazing. And I was uh, wishing from about three years of that time that Christianity was alive. And I was so sorry that it died out. What, what I meant is I was wishing all of that stuff was still going on. And as I did that and read, uh, one one afternoon, the children were taking their naps, and I saw more and more that God meant me to realize that this was happening even today, that it hadn't died out. And as I realized that with great joy and with the just to live by faith, that this really was true, I started opening my mouth, and out of it came unknown words, unknown sounds of praise and joy, and praise and joy, and more praise, and more praise, and more joy, and more power, and more joy, and more power. And it kept, I kept, for a long time, it came out, and it came out, and it came out. And I walked in the mirror, and I go, and it was me talking. But I, it wasn't me. It was more than me. And I went on and on for over an hour, and the children were asleep. And it was a joyful time. And then I decided to tell my teacher about it. And when I told her, she said, don't talk about that. And I don't remember as I said why, or I already knew, is that she didn't understand about it. And the only way I understood it was that I read about it in this book of Acts. So you had never gone to a church where something like that happened? No, I never did. You had never had somebody tell you about what it feels like to have something like I that happen? I didn't even know what Pentecostal or Charismatic meant in 1961. I knew from my mother that there were some people called Holy Rollers, but I thought that meant they rolled on the floor when they went to worship. <laughs> I didn't know anything more about them than that. And I did know Lutheran worship and Baptist worship. And I hadn't even, at this point, until a month or two later, been in a Presbyterian church. I had also been talked to a lot by the Jehovah Witnesses. But this was from God's Bible that I knew from a child. But when I was reading it as a child and a young woman, even in my high school years to my classmates in the morning, because we had prayer and Bible reading in schools then, I never opened that book. I never read that book. The book of Acts. I read the book of Revelation. I read the Gospels. And so, book of Acts. I had a new story that came right into me. It came right in with God's Holy Spirit. And to my embarrassment today, 
I never talked about it to my children either until about four days ago I told Stephen on the way in a trip about this wonderful thing that happened and how God opened my mouth. And when she told me, I drove my vehicle off the road into the grass and I said, Mom, what are you talking about? And like years before she had said, well, God took away my drinking and I didn't drink for two whole years because I used gin, gin and tonics to get through everything. <laughs> I just didn't need a drink because I had the Holy Spirit. But what happened to me in that time was also I was baptized with the Holy Spirit and I got my prayer language, I got my tongues, but I never told you because I was told by my elders and teachers to just shut up about it and never talk about it. And I said, Mom, you mean something supernatural happened in our house and some church people told you not to tell anybody and you didn't tell me? Oh my gosh. And that is part of my reality. I know that I cannot trust any big church gathering in the freedom of religion zone because there's too much darkness. We have to, have to gather the goodies and make them all happen in our homes kind of in secret, just like the people in the persecution zones. They hide in basements, they hide in caves, they hide in the woods. <laughs> and, and there's a darkness that doesn't want all these things to be put together. Go, mommy, go. Spirit of joy and peace and strength and courage and love and everything that's good. Okay, there's a scripture that uh, is in Peter. And it says, be ready always to give an answer to everyone that asks you of the reason that the hope is in you. And it says with gentleness and, and, and awe. And in my sharing my faith with others, I neglected to talk about this very important thing. What does share your faith mean? Uh, sharing my faith uh, can mean in deed and word to show that I'm part of God's kingdom. And, uh... Let's simplify. What does testimony mean? Sharing testimony my... Testimony means... It's uh, better. It's to, better. Uh, to, uh, to, uh, to give uh, a verbal account in court a lot of times is a testimony. Okay. Well, when you're and giving your court, testimony... Court of the of the people in general, in the family and all, I didn't add and I didn't accent this special thing that happened and it was very unique and not a part of my general church or worship culture and I was a big prey because of that and I here is a wonderful point that has been presented prophetically by friend Teresa we must beware of church culture Jesus started a movement with specific activities, and we can get into a culturalized church behavior that literally leaves out some essential parts. And she was saying the speaking in tongues, the miracles, and the powers were not a part of her church culture. There are all sorts of other things that some churches don't do. Some people have the idea of the sacrament, the communion, as a supernatural, amazing, wow thing that's really wonderful, and some people treat it like juice in a cookie. And some people respect some of the details like the days of fasting and some other things like the, you know, my mom liked to wear her little scarf all the time. I felt like we should have a rack of shawls in the house, and when we get into serious strong communication with the Holy Spirit we use the shawls on the shoulders of the men and over the heads of the women but my mom said I just feel better with it on all the time because you know your father has rejected me and I'm apart from him and I just feel like it it feels good you know to co be covered in my singleness and I can understand that now but uh, I mean, there's all these little elements that actually interact with the spirit realm and the troubling spirits that come around us, and we got to get all these little goodies together and not just follow along with the church culture of the people who have been nice and kind to us. That's one of the biggest problems. We've got family members, we've got sweet friends that are carrying a spiritual message, and sometimes they're just blatantly leaving out essential things 
and it's very easy to just kind of slide along and be friends in a culture that's missing some stuff. Yes. God doesn't give us the spirit of fear, but of love and power and a sound mind. But I did not express this. It was almost like I saw it and excused myself that it was only one facet of all that God was doing in and for us. And that what I was longing for that I had, that I did talk about a lot, is that in John 10, 10, he said, I have come to give you an abundant life, a life with a lot of good spiritual things. And that came, and I talked about that a lot. But I didn't talk about the signs and wonders that accompanied it, which was wrong of me. Is that explained enough, Steve? I think so. 